The Inner Circle, 10 Key Associates of Gangster Al Capone Al Capone, the infamous mob boss of Prohibition-era Chicago, is a legend in the annals of American crime. Yet behind his reign of terror and illicit empire, there stood a cadre of loyal henchmen, advisors, and enforcers. Here, we delve into 10 of Capone's closest and most trusted associates. Number 1. Frank Nitti, from enforcer to embattled leader. Hailing from the rustic terrains of Italy, Frank Nitti's transformation into one of Chicago's most feared underworld figures is stuff of legend. As Capone's trusted lieutenant, Nitti's cold efficiency in enforcing the outfit's rules made him indispensable. Yet, his ascent was more about loyalty and duty than personal ambition. When Capone's imprisonment thrust leadership upon him, Nitti was caught in the crosshairs of relentless law enforcement scrutiny. Far from the boisterous bravado of Capone, Nitti was introspective, often finding solace away from the limelight. Unfortunately, the pressures of leadership coupled with intense federal heat proved too overwhelming. In a tragic culmination of events in 1943, Nitti, with an imminent prison sentence looming, took his own life, highlighting the intense pressures of life at the top of the mob pyramid. Number 2. Jack Machine Gun McGurn, Capone's Lethal Shadow Behind the flashy headlines and infamous escapades of the Capone era, lurked the menacing figure of Jack McGurn. His nickname wasn't merely for show, he had an unmatched prowess with the machine gun. While history is rife with tales of his involvement in orchestrating the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, McGurn's ability to evade legal consequences showcased the reach and influence of the Capone outfit. However, the underworld has a unique way of settling scores. McGurn's past caught up with him in a hauntingly symbolic manner when he was gunned down, almost seven years to the day after the massacre he was rumored to have masterminded. Number 3. Tony Joe Batter Zaccardo, The Legend Beyond the Bat In the mafia world, respect is hard-earned, and Tony Accardo earned it in spades. Starting off as Capone's bodyguard, he wasn't content being just another henchman. The brutal efficiency with which he dispatched rivals, particularly with a baseball bat, earned him his chilling moniker. But Accardo was more than just muscle. Displaying an uncanny knack for leadership, he navigated the turbulent waters of organized crime post Capone, expanding the outfit's operations and influence. From gambling rackets to the nascent drug trade, under Ricardo, the mob's tentacles reached further than ever. Number 4. Ralph Capone, the silent strategist. Living in the shadow of a figure as imposing as El Capone could be stifling. Yet, Ralph Capone wasn't one to be overshadowed. While his younger brother Al made headlines, Ralph worked behind the scenes, ensuring the mob's liquor business during Prohibition ran smoothly. His acumen led him to develop a soda distribution chain, cleverly concealing their bootlegging operations. This strategic facade not only generated immense profits but also momentarily threw off law enforcement agencies. However, the long arm of the law eventually caught up, and Ralph, much like his infamous sibling, faced the consequences of tax evasion. Number 5. Jake Greasy Thumbguzik, the financial bedrock of Chicago's underworld. Born in Krakow, Poland in 1886, Jake Guzik would evolve from immigrant to one of the key financial pillars of Al Capone's empire. Over his illustrious criminal career spanning multiple decades, Guzik's genius lay in his ability to manipulate money trails and ensure the Chicago outfit's operations ran like a well-oiled machine. The whispers surrounding his bribe fund were not without merit. $30 million in the early 20th century was a fortune, equivalent to nearly $500 million in 2023 when adjusted for inflation. These funds, strategically distributed, ensured the mob's stranglehold over Chicago's infrastructure. Politicians, judges, and even policemen were said to be on Guzik's payroll, ensuring a protective layer around the outfit's operations. Number 6. Murray the Camel Humphreys, From Wales to Hollywood's Underbelly Humphreys' journey from being born in 1899 in Wales to becoming a criminal mastermind in the United States is the stuff of legends. During the Roaring Twenties, as the film industry blossomed, Humphreys with his sharp foresight, recognized the potential of Hollywood not just as an entertainment hub but also as a lucrative cash cow for organized crime. 
The transition to the 1930s saw Humphreys embedding the Chicago outfit deep into the fabric of Tinseltown. The mob's influence grew, and soon they were skimming off a staggering estimated amount of up to $1 million annually from major studios. This might seem like a drop in today's economy, but accounting for inflation, it translates to about $15 million annually, showcasing just how entrenched they were in the early movie business. Number 7. Albert Anselmi and John Scalise, A Dance with Ambition and Its Dire Consequences When Albert Anselmi and John Scalise set foot on American soil in the early 1920s, they could hardly have anticipated the meteoric rise and fall awaiting them. Their dedication and criminal prowess quickly made them indispensable assets in Capone's formidable crew. However, ambition is a double-edged sword. By the end of the 1920s, they started entertaining ideas of supplanting Capone. Their plan's discovery culminated in a chilling scene on May 7, 1929. The venue was a supposed celebration, but for Anselmi and Scalise, it turned into a death chamber. The sheer audacity of Capone personally executing them with a baseball bat wasn't just revenge, it was a theatrical message about loyalty and consequences in the world of organized crime. Number 8. Frankie Yale, Early Mob Trailblazer Born in 1893 in Italy, Frankie Yale was more than just a mentor to a young Al Capone in the early 20th century, he was a pioneer in organized crime, particularly in Brooklyn, New York. As Capone's influence began to expand in the 1920s, specifically around 1925 when Capone took over Chicago's crime scene, their bond became strained. Yale's influence waned, leading to his tragic end on July 1, 1928. On that fateful day, Yale's car was ambushed in Brooklyn, and he was fatally shot multiple times with the infamous Tommy gun. His death not only marked a shift in the power dynamics of the American mafia but was also a grim reminder of the transient nature of alliances in this world. Number 9. Sam Momo Giancana, the mob spymaster. Born in 1908, Giancana's tenure in the Chicago outfit started during Prohibition and lasted through the seismic shifts of the 1960s. By the early 60s, Giancana's dealings took a surprising twist. While organized crimes association with illegal rackets was common knowledge, in 1960-62, rumors intensified about Giancana's involvement with the CIA in plots against Cuba's Fidel Castro. However, his intricate web of power and secrecy couldn't shield him forever. On June 19, 1975, the world of crime was stunned when Giancana was found dead in his Chicago home, shot multiple times. His murder, still unsolved to this day, is a testament to the endless mysteries and dangers lurking in the mob's corridors. Number 10. Paul the Waiter Ricca, the puppet master behind bars. Born in 1897 in Naples, Italy, Paul Ricca's influence in the Chicago outfit is a testament to the longevity and reach of true power. Arrested in the mid-1940s and sentenced to a decade behind bars, Ricca's incarceration in the late 1940s and early 1950s didn't diminish his hold on organized crime. From his cell, through an intricate web of messages, often coded and passed through trusted family and associates, Ricca controlled the outfit's vast empire. Even after his release in the mid-1950s, Ricca operated discreetly, wielding his influence without ever coming into the limelight, until his death in 1972. His life is a testament to the adage, real power doesn't need to always stand in the spotlight, sometimes, it's more potent in the shadows. <laughs>